All right, we need to talk about Steve Kirsch, his Substack article that he just put out about the FAA air travel pilots and the move that the FAA just did, kind of in the dark of night, hoping I think nobody would notice. Thankfully, Steve did, and he writes about it, and let's talk about it now. Hey, everybody, Damon Roberts. Glad you're into another video. I want to remind you this video is sponsored by Mike Lindell and MyPillow. MyPillow.com slash LFS6B for all the best deals for the LFS6B audience. And you can use that promo code LFS6B at checkout. It'll save you 10 to 60% off. You know, air travel has become an essential part of all of our daily lives. It connects us to places we've never been, allows us to go visit friends and family in faraway places. But with the convenience of air travel comes the responsibility of ensuring it that it's as safe as possible for obviously all passengers at all times. Air travel is one of the safest forms of transportation. There's no denying that. However, it is important to remember that even one accident can have devastating consequences. That's why governments, airlines, safety organizations around the world work tirelessly to make air travel as safe as possible. Airlines must adhere to strict regulations and safety standards to ensure their planes are in good working order. Engineers and mechanics inspect and maintain planes on a regular basis to ensure that they're fit to fly. And when it comes to pilots, pilots also undergo rigorous training and regular checkups to ensure that they're able to handle any situation that may arise in the air. And that, my friends, is what makes this article from Steve Kirsch on his Substack so concerning. The FAA has very quietly, tacitly admitted that the EKGs of pilots are no longer normal. That's the headline. We should be concerned, very concerned. After the vaccine rolled out, the FAA secretly widened the EKG parameter range for pilots so they wouldn't be grounded. An electrocardiogram, EKG or ECG, what is it? Well, it's a test that measures the electrical activity of the heart. It is used to diagnose and monitor various heart conditions, such as heart attacks, arrhythmias, and heart failure. The EKG produces a graph that shows the electrical activity of the heart over time. This graph is called a tracings, and it is composed of different waves and segments that represent different aspects of the heart's electrical activity. The P wave represents the electrical activity of the atria, the upper chambers of the heart. The P wave should be a small and smooth line. Any changes in the P wave, such as a tall or peaked P wave, can indicate atrial enlargement. The QRS complex represents the electrical activity of the ventricles, the lower chambers of the heart. The QRS complex should be wide and tall. Any changes in the QRX complex, such as narrow or flattened QRS complex, can indicate ventricular hypertrophy or bundle branch block. The T wave represents the repolarization of the ventricles. The T wave should be small and smooth. Any changes in the T wave, such as a tall or inverted T wave, can indicate a variety of conditions. The PR interval represents the time it takes for the electrical impulse to travel from the atria to the ventricles. The PR interval should be between 120 and 200 milliseconds. A prolonged PR interval can indicate a conduction delay or block in the heart's electrical system. The QT interval represents the time it takes for the ventricles to depolarize and then repolarize. The QT interval should be, no, should be less than 440 milliseconds in men and less than 460 milliseconds in women. A prolonged QT interval can indicate an increased risk in arrhythmias and sudden death. EKG parameters are important indicators of the heart's electrical activity and can provide valuable information about the health of a heart. By carefully analyzing the different waves and segments of the EKG, healthcare professionals can diagnose and monitor various heart conditions and make appropriate treatment decisions. All right, here we are over at Steve uh, Kirsch's Substack. It's stevekirsch.substack.com. I encourage you all to go check it out. He writes great stuff. He's been on top of these vaccines. He's almost been a man on an island himself, him and a few others, really, uh, that have continually, continually, obviously written about it. Dr. Malone, Dr. McCullough, all the ones we know, the usual suspects. But Steve Kirsch has done great work uh, over at his Substack. He continues to write great articles. I encourage all of you to go over there and subscribe to it. So this is the background of what happened. On October 24th, 2022, the FAA quietly, without any announcement at all, 
widened the EKG requirements necessary for pilots to be able to fly. The PR, a measure of heart function, used to be in the range of 0.12 to 0.2. It is now 0.2 to 0.3 and potentially even higher. This is a very wide range. It accommodates people who have cardiac injury. And remember, I told you the PR interval represents the time it takes for the electrical impulse to travel from the atria to the ventricles. The PR interval should be between, as they said, 120 and 200 milliseconds. A prolonged PR interval can indicate a conduction delay or block in the heart's electrical system. So folks, that's why this is such a huge deal. Why did they make the change? Why would they do that? Well, I'll take an educated guess, Mr. Kirsch says, as to why they did that. I believe it's because they knew if they kept the original range, too many pilots would have been grounded. That would be extremely problematic. Commercial aviation in the U.S. would be severely disrupted. And why did they do that quietly without notifying the public or the mainstream media? I'm pretty sure they won't tell me, so I'll speculate. It's because they didn't want anybody to know. In other words, the COVID vaccine has seriously injured a lot of pilots, and the FAA knows it and said nothing because that would tip off the country that the vaccines are unsafe, and you aren't allowed, of course, to do that. So, folks, we need to keep an eye on this. I know Tucker did a spot last night on it as well, had someone on, reached out to the FAA, didn't get really any answer, not even a great answer, really didn't get any answer. And the question is, again, why would they do this? Why would they not rather instead have the pilots go under more surveillance, go over more testing to make sure they fit under the parameters that we've all always lived by when it comes to these things, to then expand them and to do it quietly in the dark of night? It seems a little shady. Does it mean that air travel is not safe? Absolutely not. It doesn't mean it. But it just means that there's something going on here that we need to pay more attention to. And they need to be more upfront about why they did this. Is there data that we all should know about that they saw to make this decision? Where is that data? What is that data? We should know. Air travel in this country is too important. And of course, obviously, as, 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 as we always step on a plane, we want to know that everything about that transaction, from the plane itself, to the people on the plane, to the pilots, to the airports, to the landing gear, to everything, is as safe and as checked as possible for safe travel. So we'll keep an eye on this, but it is a serious situation and it's one that deserves people sharing and knowing about. All right, everybody, thanks for joining me. That's gonna do it for this one. Again, visit our sponsor, Mike Lindell, mypillowmypillow.com. Use our pro co- uh, promo code LFS6B at checkout. If you like this Harry on the Highway shirt, this and many more over at 6bshirts.com and I'll see you in the next one.